I will be using a keyword called abstract before I use the keyword called class. So that is the first thing that you need to remember. You cannot use the keywords called static and virtual modifier whenever you are having a method. So whenever I make this class a sealed, I cannot inherit or I cannot derive from this class for further next. Hello everyone, I welcome all of you to the yet another interesting session on .NET programming language. So guys, I welcome all of you for today's session. In this session, I will be discussing about the concepts called inheritance and polymorphism. Yes, what do I have in inheritance and polymorphism in today's session? It's time for all of us to check the agenda. I will be discussing uh, the concepts of abstraction, sealed class, and also I will be discussing the different types of polymorphism and I will be discussing one of the important thing called clustering between types. So guys, let's check that without wasting much of your time. So what exactly abstract class is all about? Imagine I will be giving you a car. So that car does not contain anything, not even tires, engine, seat, steering. It does not contain anything. It just has got a body. All right, so that's what I will call this abstract. So for that, whatever you want, the modification, whatever the spare parts you want, you can just fix it. So guys, that is what I will call it as an implementation. Now, when it comes to the concept of abstract class, how do I do it? The first thing that you need to remember is, how do I make any class as abstract? I will be using a keyword called abstract before I use a keyword called class. So that is the first thing that you need to remember. Point number one, so you need to make or you need to use a keyword called abstract before the keyword called class. So if you use a keyword called abstract, then you are making the class base as an abstract class. What is the speciality of any abstract class? Whenever you declare any abstract class, you should treat that class as abstract class and it does not contain any implementation. So you will not implement, you will not write any code for this class is what in simple you need to understand. There will be no implementation. That's what you need to remember. No implementation. So that is the most important point that you need to remember. So fine, this is the main point. The second point, you cannot create the object for this abstract class. Whenever you make any class as an abstract class, you cannot create the object for that class is what you need to remember. So fine. So this is the two important things that you need to remember. Observe here, I've taken an example. So guys, I have uh, one more subclass. I'm uh, using this base as a uh, super class or the base class for this derived class. So observe here, I'm trying to create the object for this base class. So B1 is an object which I'm creating for this class. So guys, whenever I do this, so this is error, I cannot create the object for the abstract class. That's what you need to remember, all right? So fine, this is the concept that you need to remember with respect to the abstract class. Now, let's understand, you have discussed with respect to the class, sir, but can I also make any method also as an abstract method? Yes, of course, you can also make any method as an abstract method. The first thing, there'll be no implementation. All right, so it cannot have any implementation, even that method, all right? So second point, its implementation must be provided in a non-abstract derived class by overriding the method. What is the meaning of it? Imagine I have a method. So in this class, I have a method. That's what you need to remember. So what type of method you have? So you have an abstract method, okay? You have an abstract method. There is no implementation in this method. So where shall I implement? So you have to implement in a non-abstract class. This is a non-abstract class. Here, I need to implement this abstract method by using the keyword called override. So that's what you need to remember by using a keyword called overriding, all right? So that's what you need to remember whenever you want to implement any abstract method. All right, so what are the next point that I have? So guys, it can only declared in abstract class, obviously. Where do I have the abstract method? I will be having abstract method only in the abstract class. Only in this class. Here, can you have the abstract method? No, in the normal class, you cannot have the abstract method, is what you need to remember. So fine, it cannot take static or virtual modifier. You cannot use the keywords or static and virtual modifier whenever you are having a method. So that's the most important when it comes to the abstract method. Moving forward to the next concept that I have, so that's going to be sealed classes. It's very simple. Sealed in the sense what? It's, it's the last stage. You cannot do anything further. So that's the meaning of sealed. 
So whenever I make this class a sealed, I cannot inherit or I cannot derive from this class for further next. Okay, that's what the meaning that you need to understand. This is something like, you know, private access specifier. So once you are done with, you know, once you use the keyword called sealed, I cannot use it for next inheritance. Next, I cannot derive. So that is the meaning that you need to understand. So how do I make any class as a sealed? So I have to use a keyword before the class that is sealed. So whenever you make any class a sealed, that is the last stage of that class you cannot further use for the inheritance purpose. So that's the meaning that you need to remember. Can I also make uh, the method as sealed? Yes, you can also make it as a, you know, the method also sealed, okay? So that's what you need to remember with respect to the sealed method. Fine, when an instance method declaration includes the sealed modifier, the method is said to be sealed. So whenever you have a sealed keyword for any method, okay? So for example, you are defining a method. Say for example, I have a void display, okay? This is a method that I have. So most of you will be thinking, what is method, sir? Okay, so this is a method, okay? This is the function, this is the method that I have. Whenever I use a sealed keyword, so I will be making this method as a sealed method, okay? That's what I will call it as a sealed method. So fine, what is the next point? So how do I make this method a sealed method? I have to use a keyword called sealed. That's what you need to remember. Derived class cannot override this method. So how do I implement this? A derived class cannot override this method. Override in sense implementation. If I want to you know, implement anything for this method, can I do it? A derived class cannot do it. That's what you need to remember. A sealed method is used to inherit virtual method with the same signature. So remember, I will read it one more time. A sealed method is used to inherit the virtual methods. So whenever I am uh, having a method, so I should use the virtual keyword to make any method as a virtual method. Only that kind of virtual methods I can inherit. So that is what you need to remember. All right, so find the last point. The sealed modifier is always used to combination with the override modifier. Whenever I am having a virtual keyword, I should also have one more keyword that is override keyword. So that's the most important point that you need to remember with respect to the seal. Moving forward to the next one that we have. Here I have an example. Observe here. Guys, how exactly I'm making any method as a sealed method? That is the first question. First of all, you, you guys will be having one more question. So what does method? So observe this function, whatever I have. So this is what I will call it as a method. Okay. So here I have virtual. So guys, Whenever I have virtual uh, method, okay, observe, only virtual methods I will be inheriting. That's what I told in the previous point. So fine. So here I have the virtual method. I told always override. I should use the keyword override. So which method you can override? The virtual method you can override. What is the function name here? FUN and FUN. So virtual method, whatever the virtual method that I have, only that methods I can override. How do I make this method as a sealed method? By using a keyword called sealed. I can make this method as a sealed method. That's what you need to remember. All right, moving forward to the next one. When it comes to the polymorphism, guys, what is that? I will call it as a polymorphism. We have two types of polymorphism. The first one is operational polymorphism and the next one is inclusion polymorphism. So what is the difference between operation polymorphism and inclusion polymorphism? When it comes to the operation polymorphism, I will have a same name with the multiple methods. I repeat, I will have a same name for more than one method. Say for example, I have a class. Okay. So what is the name of the class? A is the name of the class. I will have void display. What is the name of the method here? Display is the name of the method. Okay. So can I have one more method with the same name? Yes, you can have display. Okay. So, but I will have one parameter. So like this, I can have more than one method, okay? I can have more than one method of same name, but different number and different type of parameter. That type of polymorphism is what I will call it as a operational polymorphism. That's what you need to remember. But when it comes to the inclusion polymorphism, I have taken an example. Observe what happens. What is the difference with respect to the inclusion polymorphism? Guys, I have a class. What is the name of this base class? I will treat this Maruti as a base class. All right, the name of the class is Maruti and the method that I have here is display, okay? Observe here, public virtual void display. 
what I'm printing? Marthikar. Okay, that's what I'm printing. Now, I will inherit this class. Class esteem. Okay, which class are you inheriting? I'm inheriting Marthi. Okay, so observe here. What is the name of the method? So, display is the name of the method. So, I will use Marthi esteem. Right, same way I will use class Zen. What is the class that you are trying to inherit? Marthi is what you are trying to inherit. All right, so fine. In the same way, I am using what method? Display method. So I can use one base class for multiple subclass. So this type of inheritance is what I will call it as a inclusion polymorphism. That's what you need to remember. Okay, so guys, what is operational polymorphism? What is the example? So guys, when it comes to the operational polymorphism, so you have a class. Okay, so class A. So in this class, what is that you need to remember? What is the main difference that you need to remember? I will have a method. So void display. The name of the method is same, but you will have different number of and type of parameter. Here I don't have parameter. So whenever I declare one more method, so guys, display. So I will have one parameter. Okay. So I have two methods, but parameters are different. So this kind is what I will call it as inclusion. But here, what is that I have? I have one base class and I will be using the same base class for the inheritance for more than one subclass is what you need to remember. So that is what I will call it as inclusion polymorphism. So guys, with this, I've come to an end of this inheritance and polymorphism chapter. So hope I made it simple and easy for all of you to understand. So with this, let me end the session. Take care. Bye-bye.